An interesting and somewhat unusual story states that on the 26th of February 1949, while visiting the Pitar Drapshin tank workshop, Yugoslav President Tito asked all the gathered workers if they could build a tank. Everyone answered aloud, We can, Comrade Tito. Tito allegedly replied something along the lines of, Then you have a task now. And so the work on Vehicle A started. Whether this is the whole truth or just a myth, it's hard to say. Even if it was true, it was more or less a symbolic gesture because the decision to start the production of Vehicle A had already been made in 1948. Welcome to the Tank Encyclopedia video on Yugoslav Tank Type A. Feel free to leave a like and a subscription, as well as checking out our website for the full written article this video is based on, and countless others. After Tito famously replied no to Stalin's demand for Yugoslavia to join the newly formed Communist Eastern Bloc in 1948, the so-called Tito-Stalin split, Yugoslavia found itself in a major political and military crisis. As a consequence, this forced Yugoslavia to turn politically more and more to the West. This would result in a slightly liberal variant of communism, in contrast to the Eastern Bloc. That led Yugoslavia to become the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. It was one of the better economies in Eastern Europe during the 60s and 70s, with much better living conditions in comparison with other communist countries. As for the more important military crisis, the Yugoslav People's Army, or JNA, short for Yugoslavenska Norodna Armia, found itself in a very serious situation. The army was in the process of reorganization and rearmament, and was heavily dependent on Soviet military supplies. The problem also resided in the fact that the Western Allies refused to deliver any military support to communist countries. This later changed as Yugoslavia became more friendly to the Western countries, which started sending large amounts of military aid. But in the meantime, the Yugoslav People's Army had to find a way out of the crisis. The armored forces mostly consisted of old and captured, and also supplied by Allies and Soviets, equipment. One way to solve this problem was to build domestic tanks, which is what the Yugoslav People's Army did. During 1948, a special commission was formed to examine the tactical and technical characteristics for the future domestic build tank, named Vehicle A, sometimes also called Type A. The Yugoslav designers had two dilemmas. Should they improve the characteristics of the already existing T-3485, or design and build a new tank? The construction of a new tank required a developed industry and also a high number of educated and qualified personnel, and perhaps most importantly, it would take a long time to complete the production and implementation process. Due to the bad economic situation, mostly due to the damage done to the industry and infrastructure during the war, the production of a new tank was not realistic or possible in the new future. As a result of this, the Special Commission proposed a plan to improve the T-3485. The first proposals regarding the new tank were better armor, the weight of about 28 tons, and a stronger gun, or at least improving the already existing gun. Three workshops were selected to work on the new Vehicle A project. These were Petar Drapshin from Ladinovax, Juro Drakovic from Slavonsky Barod, and Institute Number no. 11 from Kragajovax. Although the Petar Drapshin workshop received an order for the production of the first five prototypes, due to the complexity of the task, other workshops were later included. This workshop had first some 200 workers, which increased to 400 and even more, due to an increase in production and repairs of tanks and tank parts for the T-34 and Su-76. The head of this project was Major Anton Kurt. During the war, he worked on the Stuart M3A3 conversion using German-captured weapons. It was unusual that the new tank was built without previous project plans, as opposed to how such an endeavor usually progressed. This was to have a great and negative consequences in the late development of the tank. The first thing done was to have the workers disassemble one T-34 tank into parts and then copy them, but without testing the material or even to do a more detailed analysis of them. The lack of some metals, especially nickel, forced them to find alternative materials to be used as an improvised solution. After the list with the necessary parts was ready, the production of the new modified parts began in several different workshops. The whole tank was later assembled in the Petar Drapshin workshop. The main armament was supplied by the Red Star workshop from Kragajovax. An interesting fact is that the engine was designed by a lone soldier from the town of Bihak. The turret and the rest of the tank body were mostly made in the Juro Drakovic workshop. As previously noted, the final assembly was done in the Petar Drapshin when all the parts had arrived. 
After 14 months of hard labor working in two shifts of more than 14 hours a day, five prototypes of the Vehicle A were ready to be tested. The first tests were conducted at the foot of Mount Maidan near the capital Belgrade. The next trials were conducted with three tanks in the region of Mladenovac's Aranjelovac's Topola. The other two vehicles were used for testing the gun. This tank was based on the T-34-85, so it's no surprise that it shared a lot of similarities with the Soviet vehicle in almost all aspects. The interior and the crew positions of Tank A were almost identical to the T-34. The driver was located on the left side, while the radio operator, who was also the machine gunner, was on the right side of the hull. In the tank turret, there was a commander, the gun operator, and the loader. To gain access in their battle positions, the crew had two ways of entering the tank. Through two hatch doors on the turret roof, or through the hatch door on the front hull armor. As well as the driver view hatch slides, two periscopes were located on the top of the turret and used for observation. The main armament was the Soviet 85mm ZIS-53 gun with some minor modifications done to it such as improved hydraulics and adding a muzzle brake, although the original Soviet ammunition was still used. 50 rounds of ammunition for the main gun were carried inside vehicle A. The original Soviet TS-15 sight device was exchanged with the German TZF-1, taken from captured Panzer IVs, with an improved magnification times 4 instead of times 3. The maximum elevation of the main gun was negative 10 degrees to plus 17. The secondary weapons were also changed. The Soviet DTM machine guns were abandoned, and instead two MG42s were installed. A third heavy machine gun, a Browning 50 cal, was installed on the roof of the turret to be used for light anti-aircraft rolls. The frontal armor thickness was 50 millimeters slanted back 30 degrees, while the angled front hole corners, sides, and rear armor were 45 millimeters thick. The hull roof and floor armor were similar, 20 to 25. The turret was elliptical shaped with a frontal thickness of around 100 millimeters, with the sides 82 to 86 and the rear 60. The tank turret was narrower but higher than the original T-34 one. A new 500 horsepower V2 diesel engine was installed. The engine was mostly built from domestic parts, but the materials used to build it were of low quality, which affected the engine's performance and caused a lot of overheating. The running gear was identical to the T-34. There were a lot of problems with this transmission, and it was bumpy and unreliable. The tracks were 50 centimeters wide and weighed more than the Soviet ones. Vehicle A was never used in any combat operations. They were first shown to the public at a military parade held in Belgrade on the 1st of May, 1950. After that, they were used for a limited time for testing and crew training. Only five were ever built, simply because the entire production was too slow and too expensive, and because foreign armored vehicles had become available in good quantities for use. A more damning reason for the rejection of this project lies in the very way in which these tanks were built. Although several vehicles were made, each of them was a unique vehicle. Because there were no design plans or calculations, each of the five tanks was built in a unique way with some differences in production, like materials used, how heavy they were, etc. So when Yugoslav Army field tested these vehicles, it was not possible to make an accurate conclusion as to whether they were successful or not. They couldn't be considered as prototype vehicles for possible future production, and in order to get any useful information, it was necessary to produce more, which was too expensive. Other problems were that Vehicle A was a few tons heavier than it was originally planned. The height and width did not meet the specifications, and there were too many breakdowns during testing. Generally speaking, Vehicle A wasn't even any better than the T-34 it was supposed to replace. The final decision was made to quit the development of this project. The order for 10 more vehicles planned was cancelled. Despite the cancellation of the Vehicle A project, experiments on improving the T-34 continued for a little bit after that. At the beginning of March 1952, one vehicle was sent to the Kalamegdon Military Museum in Belgrade, where it is still located and can be seen. A second vehicle was supposed to be placed in the Petar Dropshin workshop. Two turrets were put on display in front of the workshop Juro Drakovic. The rest were initially used for testing and training, but most ended as firing targets. This concludes Tank Encyclopedia's video on a Yugoslav tank Type A. We hoped you liked it. Don't forget to check out our website and our Patreon, and until next time, keep us in your sights.